Well, hi, I'm Josh Ellis, the Chief Executive Angel at SavingsAngel.com, and welcome to The Savings Angel Show. I'm podcasting to you from the breezy city of Orlando, Florida. Now, I'm an extremely busy consumer expert, money-saving advocate, syndicated newspaper columnist, and that guy that turns digital entrepreneurs into media celebrities at upmyinfluence.com. I love what I do and can't wait to get going on today's episode. So in order to help you save more, earn more, and live more abundantly on today's show, I'll be covering how to stop wasting time. We're going to talk about going back to school shopping, even though school's already started, but how you can save a ton of money by shopping online consignment. And I've got a great resource to share with you. And also, we're going to be interviewing and we'll be having a conversation with a military veteran who created a really, really cool outdoor game that you can play with the family. He invented it. It's really awesome. It's called Rollers. And we're going to talk about that on this show. So let's get going. Now, whether you're trying to work from home, do schoolwork or just get some household chores done, you can easily get distracted by the many time-wasting activities that bombard our lives, from social media to games on your phone and on your iPad. Look, I'm going to be the first to admit right now, like I have a little bit of a gardenscapes addiction, so it's kind of like Candy Crush, uh, except it's, you know, with gardens instead of candy. Listen, leisurely activities have their place. But if it's keeping you from being productive in your daily life, you could put a few habits in place to keep them from taking over your life. So, you ready? Take notes. I've got five steps here on how to stop wasting time. Number one, here you go. Keep a running to-do list. Now, whenever you think of something that you need to do, whether it's big or small, put it on a to-do list. All right, this list can be on your phone, your computer, or just a good old fashioned piece of paper. Now, whenever you find yourself, now what I do, I've got a little black book right here that that I'm holding right now, and this is where all my to-do lists go. And then what I'll do is I just go and I line them out, I cross them off as soon as I get that task done. Now, whenever you find yourself with spare time, I want you to take a look at the list to see if there's something productive on it that you can do to fill your time. Now, many times people turn to time wasters like social media or television when they have free time but can't think of anything productive to do. Now, this list this list takes away the guesswork. Checking items off the list also helps to give you a sense of accomplishment. Number two, use a timer. Now, if you want to spend some time relaxing or having fun, you could set a timer so that you don't get carried away. When the timer goes off, stop that activity and move on to something more productive. Now, I believe that Apple iOS 12 has some new features that can help with this as well. So you could set timers directly within your phone, and then they have some ways now that you can actually monitor your usage so you're not spending quite so much time addicted to your phone. Now, you can also set a timer for productive activities to keep you motivated. Often, getting started on a project is the hardest part because you're not sure how long it will take. Listen, getting started is always the most difficult point. I remember going from, I did a couch to marathon. And I got to be honest, at the beginning of running, I did not like it at all. And in fact, I'll be honest, most times when I go out running, I don't really enjoy the very beginning. Like that's the worst part. But once you get into the act of doing it, it gets a lot easier. So how did I psych my brain out? in order to be able to fully accomplish in a marathon, a marathon, or, you know, and the same thing goes for anything else big that you want to do. If you're studying piano, learn to play the piano, uh, if you're learning a foreign language, whatever it may be, is that I would set myself little micro goals. And so, for example, for running, I would say, look, right now, I'm not committed to running, but I am committed to putting my running clothes on and my running shoes on. And so I would do that. And so I would commit to that small little micro commitment. Then I would say, you know what? I'm just going to go outside. I've I've got the next hour that I've got blocked off. I'm going to go outside and I'm just going to start running. And if I only end up going around the block, then that's fine, right? 
And I could commit to that because it was like I wasn't committed all the way. Then the next thing I would do is once I would just start running, of course, the first like quarter mile is terrible. It's horrible. But then you just start feeling yourself kind of get into it. And then I'm like, oh, okay, I'm going to go to the, uh, the, in my case, like I'd run to the back gate and back. And it took me a long time to be able to do that. A long time, I mean, relatively speaking, about three, four weeks of, of really dedicated trying to get to the back gate of my big development and back, which is four and a half miles, which to some of you sounds like, oh my gosh, I can't even imagine running for four and a half miles. That sounds like ultimate pain. Um, and then other people are like, ah, that's nothing. But for me, it was, it was big. And it took me a while of going out every other day and I would try to see if I could just keep on running. And it, you know, it, like I said, it wasn't until the end of third week, maybe into the fourth week, that I finally, now listen, I was running at a granny pace, all right? It, it, I was, you know, not running very fast, but I did it. Uh, and I got to tell you, after having lost close to 60 pounds and then being able to do something like that, it made me feel really, really good. So look, there's some other ideas on, like, if you have something that you want to do, something that's kind of big, just break it down into small, bite-sized goals that are a little bit more attainable. It's really, really helped me. Now, getting back to setting a timer for the productive things. If you set a timer, tell yourself that you could take a break when the timer goes off, you'll be more motivated to get to work, just like what I was talking about with going out and running. All right, you ready? Number three, keep an activity log. Now, people are often not even aware of just how much time they waste in a day. Figuring out how you spend your limited time can help you see which things you can cut out to create more time for meaningful activities. So for a week or two, what I want you to do is write down exactly how you spend every hour, maybe every 15 minutes or every 10 minutes of each day, and be honest with yourself. At the end of the two weeks, review your activity log and make appropriate adjustments to how you spend your time. Now, if your goals are more fitness related, this is where, you know, maybe a little Fitbit or using your watch or something like that to monitor your activity can also come in helpful. Number four, I want you to create a set schedule. Now, once you figure out exactly how you spend your time, I want you to write down all the different meaningful activities you want to achieve each day and each week. Write out a schedule in which you specify certain time blocks for certain activities. Now, it's okay if you want to schedule out time for leisure activities too. I encourage you to do that. Scheduling them in will keep them from getting out of hand. This schedule will help you decide to time your activities. Okay, guys and ladies, ladies and gents, like... <laughs> If, if you really want to make some adjustments to what you get done in your life, I promise you that what I've reviewed with you so far is absolutely going to make a huge difference. I've studied productivity, and I'm going to tell you right now that what I'm sharing with you absolutely works, okay? But there's a step five, and that is to have a purpose for each day. Now, sometimes your main objective for the day is just to spend time with your family, and that's okay. Saturdays, Sundays, look, there's not a whole lot that gets on my schedule if it doesn't involve my family. However, having some sort of objective each day helps keep your mind focused. It also prevents you from willing, just kind of willing away your time with mindless activities. Now, if you find yourself spending your time on something that doesn't fit with your objective, you can redirect your efforts. Now, you, ex you can expand this principle to have an objective for each week and each month too. Start setting goals for yourself and write down those goals so you remember them. And remember, if you have big goals, you need to break them down into daily activity goals, okay? It's really hard to say, well, I'm gonna lose 20 pounds. Like that's a big, big goal, okay? One thing I don't think I've shared with you on this podcast, but I recently have lost uh, over 23 pounds. And um, I'm going to invite a guest on a little bit, probably in the next few episodes. I'm going to make some invitations um, just in regards to like how I did that. Now, if you followed me for any length of time, you know that I've gained weight and I've lost weight. I actually did this over the course of a few months and it was very successful. And it definitely involved much more so like how I was eating, when I was eating, and the quality of food that I was eating. And uh, again, Make sure you hit subscribe to this podcast.
because I, I want to go through it in detail uh, before I just kind of say, well, I did this. And then you're like, oh, okay, well, I know what he did. Okay, you don't know. <laughs> I'm going to go through this in detail. Hit subscribe in about three to four episodes. I'm going to go through exactly what my wife and I, and my wife also lost over 20 pounds. And I'm going to review exactly what we did. Okay, so make sure you hit subscribe. So again, I want you to achieve these really big goals, okay? You're going to have to break it down into activity goals, okay? And then give yourself realistic a realistic time frame in order to get that down, get that done. And that activity goal, you're going to have to break that down into daily and even maybe even multiple times a day uh, in order for you to be able to accomplish this thing. So I, I believe that we're here on the earth to do great things. I believe that we're here on the earth to exercise our potential and create amazing stuff. And uh, I believe that in doing so, we're absolutely fulfilling everything that that we've been given and we've been blessed with. And uh, as we do this, that truly, in my opinion, is part of living an abundant life. Now, if you're like me, You love it when the kids go back to school, but you dread how much new clothes for the school year will cost. Or in our case, they have cost. Listen, I'm going to hook you up in a big, big way. I'm going to share with you exactly what my family and I do. Okay. Why do we buy new kids clothes if they just outgrow them in a few months? I think my name, my neighbor's kid shot up three inches over the summer. I, I just saw him at Publix and I'm like, holy cow. It's like, he looks like him, but he's like adult size now. Now, maybe you love this time of year because you can get the greatest deals on summer clothes. You haven't even, you haven't yet, uh, they haven't yet sold like in the clearance racks, but either way, wouldn't it be great if there was a place to discover awesome discounts on gently used clothes and you could get them for like up to 90% off of retail prices. There is such a place. I am majorly addicted to this website. It is swap.com. It is the world's largest online consignment and thrift store. Now, before you go ahead into the website, I got a special code. Hang on a second. With swap.com, you can save up to 90% off retail prices on your favorite brands like Lululemon, Carter's, Nike, J. Crew, and Gap. Whoa! Like that's huge savings. If you get 90% off of some of those brands, no more cranky kids being dragged around from store to store, no more tired feet or back to school crowds. You can stop driving to the store after store after sifting through racks. You can easily sift through tons of clothes in seconds on swap.com with easy to use filters to find just what you need. So they have quality hand-inspected items added daily. Now, they have millions of items from gently used clothing to toys and games. What a great way to donate to your kids' classrooms. If something doesn't fit, don't worry. You can enjoy hassle-free returns within 30 days. All you need to do is just visit swap.com right now. And to make this just a little sweeter, we have a special offer just for our Savings Angel fans. Are you ready? Right now, and I've never, I have not seen this big of a discount. Okay. Uh, you know, and, and we reached out to swap.com because we love, I love them. And I'm like, listen, one thing my audience likes is getting the absolute biggest deals possible. So right now, you can get an additional 35% off select items for your first order with our special promo code. Angel, you got to enter that promo code at checkout, A-N-G-E-L. Once again, you don't want to miss this. You just enter the promo code ANGEL at checkout, and you can enjoy that 35% off. That's swap.com, where you'll find new deals every day on their homepage. Now, have you ever played outdoor games, maybe like bocce, lawn bowling, horseshoes? Remember lawn jarts? Yeah, you can't play that game anymore. <laughs> That is a dangerous game, man. I remember back in the 70s and early 80s, man. Oh, we would. So if lawn darts, if you don't know, it's a big plastic dart. And at the end of it, at the tip of it is a big metal pointy thing. And so it, you you used to whip this thing across the lawn and you try to hit it into a uh, into a hoop. And if you could do it, then you get points. Uh, and of course, as dumb kids, we would what we do is we take these 
giant and they were heavy and you'd swing them and you'd throw them straight up in the air. And I'm telling you, if that thing came down on your head, you're going to the ER. Uh, thankfully, they've outlawed such dangerous games. Uh, but what I want to do is uh, introduce you to a cool game. It's very safe, but very, very fun. And it combines games like bocce, lawn bowling, and horseshoes. And uh, I'm going to introduce you to Matt Butler, who's the inventor of Rollers, which is the next great outdoor game. Matt is a veteran of the U.S. Air Force. When I found that out, I reached out to him. I'm like, Matt, look, I got to hook up a fellow uh, veteran business owner. And in the time leading up to retiring from active duty, what he did is he began designing and testing this fun outdoor game. Uh, my kids and I have played it. It's awesome. It works. It's it's cool. Like it's, it's a really, really fun game that you could play as a family and you get especially you want to get a little bit of competitiveness uh, going. It's really, really fun. You could play it about anywhere from your backyard to the beach. So with that, let's get to my conversation with Matt Butler of Rollers. All right, Matt, you are the inventor of Rollers. And uh, and I uh, cannot wait to play this uh, because the reviews on Amazon are through the roof. And can you kind of explain what, by, by the way, welcome and I'm hoping you can kind of explain what Rollers is, because I think my audience is going to really love this. Thank you. I appreciate you having me on here. Um, so Rollers really is a fusion of a bunch of other outdoor games that have really been existing on the market for probably a century. So I'm kind of a mad scientist of other yard games. I love to be outside and do other things. Rollers, think of it as a combination of bocce ball, bowling, horseshoes. There's even a French game called Petanque, which is like a bocce. It's kind of like roly boly or feather bowling in Belgium. I mean, there's all these different games that are rolled into this, this one game. Um, but I did make a unique aspect of it. And so essentially the game is you divide two goals from each other and you're rolling discs that look like oversized hockey puck discs towards the other goal. It's a leisure game and it's very casual and it's something that you could uh, bring to the, a party or beach or barbecue. And it's just really, I enjoy being outdoors, being with people and just hanging out. I think it's a fun game just to get people talking and interacting with each other. I agree. I agree. So, and you're also a veteran business owner, is that correct? Yes. Yeah, so I actually recently retired from the Air Force after 20 years and I started rollers in my garage prototyping them about eight years ago. And now we sell it in several hundred retailers in the U.S. And so now I'm doing it full time as I transition through uh, military uh, transition and retirement from the military. That's amazing. So for those for someone who's listening and saying, oh, my gosh, Matt, that's the American dream. How did you become an overnight success? <laughs> Um, I'm sure, it, of course, there are no overnight successes, but I'm wondering if you could kind of share, like, how did you, how did you grow this? Well, I, I would say I'm probably an overnight success, eight years in the making, and it's probably, you know, I keep growing it. All I can say is persistence and tenacity and just not giving up. I've seen other people develop products and they give it a couple years and they just go in all in like a sprint and put a bunch of marketing and ads in there and it doesn't work out and they don't get their ROI that they want to keep the business going. Oh. And I just bootstrapped it just a, a little bit at a time and just, just care and feeding. And that's what it is, is just not giving up and continuing on. So we'll have an image of this at savingsangel.com. And if you're on our email list, um, we'll, we'll send you a direct link so that you can check this out on Amazon. Or you could just search it yourself. But it's R-O-L-L-O-R-S. Uh, and you'll see it's, it's, it's Amazon's choice. It's got 122, like 4.999 star reviews. Um, so very, very exciting to see that validation, I would imagine. Oh yeah, I, I love it. I almost love getting the reviews and feedback uh, more than anything else. And, and I like to interact with uh, the customers and uh, I'll get feedback from people. And some is great feedback. Others are just kind of like, it's, a, you know, it's the only piece of feedback I received out of thousands of items. But I listen to everybody and I love to interact with people. I get emails all the time from people with different ideas and different things to do and different events we could sponsor. Love interacting with, with the customers. 
And and this will so these discs will roll in the grass and sand. Yes, think of it like like a, almost a tire. It just rolls over anything. A lot of people will look at it and say, "How do you think this fares in the sand?" It does really well. Yeah, uh, especially East Coast beaches does really well because it you know it's almost uh, they're very uh, long and uh, and almost like a road. And then you go to the West Coast, a little bit more bumpy, a little bit more longer beaches, but mm -hmm. it does well really everywhere. The only place I would say. Uh, I would probably limit is concrete because those discs, mm. they could roll a whole football field. They just keep going and going and going. <laughs> and then you also dent them up because the product is made of a New Zealand hardwood. And so you don't want to scratch mm. it up. It's got multiple layers of lacquer and a silk screen on it. Well, that's amazing. So, uh, and I would imagine you have a website as well. Yep, rollers.com. And it's got a little story about me. It's got some different blogs, some different ideas. We've got information on there on how to host a tournament, uh, tournament bracket sheets if someone wants to host them, uh, introductory sheets they can uh, download for scoring, all sorts of different things on there. It's a good spot. Uh -huh. What a, what a great fan, uh, what a great uh, activity for like a family reunion. I, I could imagine that would be a church party, church get together, I think would be a lot of fun to do a tournament like that. Um, well, that's awesome, Matt. Thank you so much for sharing this with us and, and, uh, and bringing this game and, and congratulations on the success so far. And uh, as well, thank you so much for your service. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Matt, for being with us today to talk about rollers. You can visit rollers.com. That's R-O-L-L-O-R-S.com to watch videos about the game or to purchase the game for your family and friends. Again, that's R-O-L-L-O-R-S dot com. You can also find them on Facebook, Twitter, and the YouTube. Now, if you've loved hearing everything on this podcast, would you take a minute to leave a five-star review in iTunes? By doing so, you help us get this podcast out to more people. The higher our rating, the more we're noticed. And as always, if you have any specific questions or if there's anything you'd like to hear me talk about, you can drop me a comment in the podcast feedback. Write me on our private Facebook group, of which you are formally invited to attend. Just look us up. Just search Savings Angel. Or you can call our podcast hotline at 407-205-9250 and leave me a message. I'll answer your question, write you back, or with your permission, I might even share your question or story with others on this show. With that, have a wonderful week full of saving more, earning more, and living more abundantly. And thank you for listening. That's a dangerous game, man. 